How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the FNI RSI 2 channel 100 megahertz oscilloscope. This is an electronic hobbyist machine where it allows you to measure voltages over time. 100 megahertz means it can measure up to 100 megahertz signal. Anything faster, it's not going to look very good. And usually these oscilloscopes, the faster that it can detect, the more expensive it gets. I remember 100 megahertz scopes used to cost a lot. I paid thousands of dollars for it. Technology has improved significantly. These things are not very expensive anymore and it can still be 100 megahertz. Of course, in order to measure 100 megahertz, it needs to have a very fast sampling rate. That's what it says here, one giga samples per second. That's one billion samples per second. In other words, if you measure something that's 100 megahertz, one single wave, right? It's going to have 10 data points on this wave. That's enough detail to show you what that wave would look like even at 100 megahertz. Let me unbox this, show you what's included and test out all the features. Small QC card, a USB-A AC adapter, scope probes. Interesting that it has a USB-A to USB-A cable, a barrel plug to USB-A cable, a BNC cable with allocator clips on the end, and an instruction manual. The scope by itself weighs 2 pounds, 0.6 ounces. So all of these power buttons and function buttons are rubber dice. When you press on them, there's a crisp tactile feeling that you did press them. You have these adjustment knobs that feels like there's indentations as you move them. One, two, three, four. And these position knobs are traditionally smooth. So you have your up down for channel one and channel two. There's also smooth adjusting horizontal knob and also the trigger for up down. There's also a plus minus knob here. The bottom has retractable feet. Towards the back, this is rubber die so it can stand up. Kind of grips the desk a little bit. On the right side, there's nothing. On the left side, there's also nothing. On the back, there's a hidden handle that runs almost the entire length of the scope. This is pretty typical, so you can carry it around. Nothing hidden inside this groove here. Usually the sticker will say what kind of voltage and polarity this DC connector requires, but it's not written on this particular sticker. 100 megahertz, which is kind of like an entry level oscilloscope. It's a little bit more serious than a hobbyist scope. The resolution though is only 800 by 480. Typically oscilloscopes comes with one probe per channel that you're buying. However, this one comes with three of them. This is a two channel oscilloscope. Being a 100 megahertz capable scope, these are 100 megahertz probes. You can switch them between 1x or 10x, meaning that a 10 volt signal will appear as a one volt at the output here. Most scope probes allows you to switch it between 1x and 10x. When you do that, you have to change the corresponding settings in the scope to match. Comes with a little bag of accessories. This little thing is to prevent short of your circuitry. So you can put this cap on so you can probe something very fine just at the tip without worrying that the length of the tip is going to touch other metal contacts or that the ground is going to touch other things. There's also this tip which will protect you further on either side. It also comes with this compensation screwdriver. You inject a proper square wave into the probe, look at it on the scope and you adjust it with this little screwdriver here until it looks square. There's also a set of rings so that you can color code your probes. I'm kind of disappointed it does not have yellow in this set of rings here. It does have blue though because I would like to attach these rings to the probe to match the color here. I suppose if we pick red it's close enough for channel one. So I'm going to put in the red one for channel one and blue for channel two. This other probe that's 100 to one you can't actually switch the division ratio on this it's always 100 to one. It's a 100 megahertz probe that's capable of sensing up to two kilovolts. That's a lot. It's a P 4100 it's capable of up to 3.5 nanosecond rise times. The 6100 it's also capable of 3.5 nanosecond rise times. The power adapter is a 2 amp 5 volt device so that means it only consumes 10 watts. Let me turn it on. It's actually pretty quick to turn on. We're consuming only 6.3 watts. The screen looks really good to me, a lot more anti-glare than I expected. I have studio lights right behind here. If I kind of move it around from left to right, little to no noticeable glare. Let me connect the function generator output, the channel one probe, configure the channel one. We can choose 1x, 10x, or 100x here. I'll just do 1x, DC, 
FFT off. Ooh, we can do FFT. And I will just connect the function generator output to channel one. I'm totally blown away at the quick response of this thing. Change the vertical division. Very snappy. Move it to the middle. Look at that. It's actually quicker than my really old Tiktronic scope. Let's configure the function generator. Frequency, triangular, sawtooth, step, half wave, full wave, exponential, logarithm, exponential logarithm, square root, multi-audio, sync, custom, sign. Let's see how fast it can go. Let's do 10 megahertz. Okay, just for fun, I'm just gonna move it up and down. 10 megahertz is the highest the function generator can do, which is pretty darn good for a function generator on its own. The score wave can only do up to two megahertz. Look what happens when I zoom out a little bit. It sort of morphs into the new wave. It doesn't just immediately change. It looks like it averages whatever it's showing a little bit. I can move the trigger up and down just fine. This is fast moving. If I do slow, Oh yeah, it makes everything slower moving so you can have more precision. One of the things that's really important about scopes is to measure whatever you see on screen. I'm gonna try to measure this. Press the right button to select the other cursor. That's pretty intuitive. And you take a look right here for the period and also the frequency. If I look at only one cycle of it, it says two megahertz. If I want the vertical ones, turn off the horizontal. Again, I can measure this. V1 is 2.6 volts. V2 is 26 volts. There's a S pick. Data saved and we go picture browsing. Okay, we can look at one of the pictures. Triangular, multi-audio, I like that one. Take a picture and the function generator menu is on. It actually just turns it off. It doesn't really take a picture yet. I gotta press it again, which is good because I don't want a picture of that function generator menu right here. So let's go to the menu and look at the pictures that we took. The cool thing here is let's do FFT on. Look at that. The function buttons over here allow you to pick a metric that you want to display. So you get to pick six different metrics. Over here, it shows three of them already. The RMS voltage is 549 millivolts. Average voltage is 363. The frequency is two megahertz, but we have dual tone right here. So if we go to function generator, it is at two megahertz. We'll figure out what the heck this is actually. Horizontal cursor. We move the cursor over here and it looks like the main peaks are actually two megahertz it looks like the second tone is five times whatever our main peak is so this is 10 megahertz the fft up here shows a bunch of peaks right but when i zoom out we have more cycles shown on the screen but because we zoomed out the frequency range of the fft actually reduces so if we keep on zooming out we can see a higher and higher resolution of fft look right here it only shows five peaks right but if i zoom out one more time we now have one two three four five six seven this is an image and these frequencies actually are not really there so that's a limitation of basic digital signal processing i haven't been able to figure out how to move the FFT FFT line a little bit lower so I can zoom in. If we reduce the amplitude, it looks like it won't hit the top of the signal here. And if I increase the amplitude a little bit, it kind of maxes out this FFT. It looks like we can't actually go and read the frequency here with the cursor. The cursor is really just for your voltage time domain signals. You can use it just to reconfirm some things. For example, I know this is a two and 10 megahertz tone. So this is likely a two megahertz times 10. That would be that one and there are also a couple of harmonics in between so i'm going to turn that off right now very nice to have if you are in a pinch and you really really want to see the fft's i'm actually very impressed with the update rate and the quality of this screen the response as i change to knobs is also very good you can change some of the measurements right here instead of vrms if i just press this i can go down and say hey i want to measure frequency instead it shows frequency and I change this one to something else. Let me go down some more. Maybe there are more. Nope. V peak to peak is always useful. And let's say the cycle duration. Just for fun, I set up the function generator to output a step cycle. I've connected both channel one and channel two to it. And also this S wave thing will actually save the actual data. S wave, data saved. Go here, 
wave browsing. So we have some data here. If I push this, it will show the actual data. See if I can unplug this, it's still showing there. Capture output, capture saved, output browsing. You also have screen brightness. If I turn it to, let's say 50% and all the way down to zero, very, very dim. I think it's best at maximum brightness, scale brightness. Let's say 50%, okay. There we go, it reduces the brightness. I don't want it that bright. Okay, yeah, I like it like that more. So you can do X, Y mode. Okay, since I have both probes connected to the same signal, what we see here is just basically the difference between the two. One is 1X and one is 10X. Base calibration. We have to pull out all the probes to calibrate. Let's not do that right now. USB export. So we can plug in a USB and it's gonna export all the data it has. Even with it outputting all this funny signal and using both channels, it's still using only about 6.6 .6 watts for the entire thing. The AC adapter is capable of 10 watts so this is a very power sipping device overall if you want to measure voltages this is a very good 100 megahertz scope very low price the fft is a little bit lacking because you cannot zoom in and measure the exact frequency in order to know the frequency that you're measuring i would suggest using the function generator put in a frequency that you know look at where it is on the fft plot don't change any settings and then move the probes back over to whatever that you want to measure. Overall, very responsive, weighs only two pounds. I like how it comes with a function generator. Normally you have to buy a whole separate device. That's almost as much as the cost as this particular oscilloscope itself. The screen has very good anti-glare. Although if I point it right at my studio lights, you can see the glare there now, but in most angles, it looks very good. Don't be afraid that it's only 480 lines by 800 lines. To me, this looks super crisp and that's actually plenty when you're displaying voltage signals. If you guys are interested in this oscilloscope, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time. <laughs>